This week on Outdoor Oklahoma, looking back at a documentary produced more than 50 years ago titled The Spirit of Fishing in Oklahoma, makes us wonder if it's still relevant today. And if so, what does the spirit of fishing look like for today's modern angler? Right now on Outdoor Oklahoma. How you doing? I am great. It's good to see you all. How's business going? Doing great. Doing great. If there's any two guys that would have their hand on the pulse of fishing today, it'd be you two. So tell me, is the spirit of fishing still alive and well? Oh, Todd, I tell you what, there's so many times that we see uh, and have blessings of uh, kids have been coming in here that's uh, mowing lawns and, uh, and they also have come through here and made their parents stop and uh, come in and see us and uh, taking and using all their allowance to, to buy fishing gear. You see a grandfather and a great grandfather taking a kid fishing. Uh, I think that spirit's here. The spirit of fishing to me is uh, uh, just like when I was a boy, was, was, was working hard for my money and coming and spending on the things I enjoyed and, and that was buying fishing tackle and hunting gear. And uh, we're seeing that today here in this store in, in north central Oklahoma and uh, it's still alive and well. Pretty neat, pretty neat. Well, that is great. Well, I'm actually here to buy some worms, so I'm hoping you got some. <laughs> oh, hey, I do. Good. All right, I've got some kids I'm gonna take out, and uh, nothing better than a carton of worms. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. they're alive and well. All right, those are guaranteed to catch fish, right? Sir, sure. good looking. <laughs> Two one makes four and one makes five. All right. Thank you. Absolutely. There you go. Good luck out there. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have a good day. You bet. Thanks, guys. Good luck out there. They pursue their sport with an all-consuming passion, for fishing is more than just a pastime. It's a way of life, a spirit. It's a beckoning call as free as a bird on wing and as ancient as the deep red waters of a lonely old river. A siren song of young and old, rich and poor, mesmerizing to all who heed the call. The spirit of fishing. Every year after winter has run its course, there comes a day when the outdoor world seems to awaken with new life. The air is sweet and fresh. New warmth is felt. A carpet of green blankets the landscape. Everything is peaceful and pleasant. It's a rocking chair day made for going fishing. For a boy, there's time to look around, to witness the marvels of God's good earth. find contentment on a day like this. It's a time to discover new values and uncover old ones. It's a time to introduce a wide-eyed lad to the wonders of nature and crappie fishing. Then will come the moment when the float goes down. first fish. He is well on his way to becoming a man, a fisherman. There comes another day each spring after the rains have backed the lakes into bottomlands when carp and gar begin to move into the shallow sloughs seeking a place to spawn. For 
bull fishermen, this is a long-awaited moment. Now they can thread through the jungle of flooded trees and grass for a fleeting glimpse, a quick shot, and their own particular brand of angling success. are sooner bow fishermen's game. They leave the sport fish to the hook and line anglers. It's the contest bow hunters are interested in, and nothing's more challenging to them than sending an arrow on a true path to a gar lurking in the mysterious shadows of an underwater world. You know, I could watch folks fishing at a family fishing clinic like this all night long. That guy over there that's running it, Skylar St. Ives, I bet you he's got an opinion about the spirit of fishing. Fishing clinics serve as a key component to our aquatic education program. For some of these kids, it's the first opportunity they've ever had to go fishing. And without clinics like these, they may never have that opportunity. And the great thing about fishing is that there really is no final destination. It's just a long journey and it's passed from one angler to the next, and these kids serve as that next generation. moving, the stream starts somewhere in the hill country, fed by springs. It comes rushing down through canyons and around bends to nourish the lowlands. Fishermen reserve a special place in their hearts for streams like the Mountain Fork. They call their treks over the rippling waters float trips. fish of the river are usually hungry. The cold moving water gives a scrappy sunfish added life. The fishing's easy, lazy, a hectic five o'clock world left behind. It's a time of soft breezes and warm sun. It's a Huck Finn attitude drifting forever towards nowhere, contemplating nothing but the moving, changing shadows on shore. What stirs sooner river floaters? It's spelled tranquility, peace of mind, love of nature, fellowship of man. The purling waters lent balm to troubled souls. Miles away from the concrete jungles, the angler can mull over things forgotten in the rush of life. Here in a frail boat bobbing on the quivering water, the legacy of mankind is unfolded. The shackles of convention are washed away by the gentle rill, and man, like the river, is free. During midsummer, when a hot sun dominates the sky, shade is at a minimum, and sand bass fishing is at a maximum. There's no better way to beat the heat than on a lake, lapping up gentle breezes wafting over the water, and placing all cares and woes in the end of a hook. There they are, sandies, silver bodies sparkling in the sun as they feed on hapless shad. 
Summer fishing's family fishing. The kids are out of school, the wife's tired of staying home, and the Sandys are beckoning. It's forgotten when Sandys are running. No time for discomfort. Only follow the schools. Cast out. Catch one and repeat the cycle. A noodler is an adventurous fisherman, supposedly sane, who wades along the murky banks of rivers and streams, reaching into underwater holes in search of fish. trip can get a bit spooky. Veterans know the obstacles and how to avoid them. Nothing deters their progress to a secret noodling hole. Under the banks are holes favorite hangouts for catfish. Noodling's an art, and a newcomer needs some careful explanation. Flathead this time. For the newcomer, there's a sinking sensation in the pit of his stomach. He talked big before they started, and now he's got to live up to his word. hand into the hole and something's wrapping around it. It's slimy. Noodling's no place for the faint-hearted. It's a lot like trying to put a half Nelson on an alligator in three feet of water. Beginners usually have to try again. A good firm grip, two hands should be better than one. Once a guy gets the hang of it, noodling's the only sport in the world. He's not really crazy, it's the rest of the world that's out of line. 
even though every bit of the Spirit of Fishing documentary is still relevant and accurate today, it's amazing to think how much has changed in the 50 years since it was first produced. For starters, many of the most popular lakes in the state didn't even exist 50 years ago. And today, Oklahoma has more than 200 lakes created by dams and more than 1 million surface acres of water. That's more than any other state in the country. And then there's our world-class paddle fishing that every year draws anglers to Oklahoma from every other state and from countries literally around the world. It's hard to imagine that 50 years ago, hybrid striped bass didn't even exist here in Oklahoma, and now they're a staple species in many lakes across the state. And as popular today as striped bass fishing is, it's another opportunity anglers didn't even have back then. Today, Lake Texoma is considered to be the premier inland striped bass fishery in the country. The introduction of Florida largemouth bass genetics began in the 1970s, shortly after the spirit of fishing was produced, and a few years later resulted in breaking the state record that had stood for more than 40 years. And speaking of largemouth bass, what better testament of our state's world-class opportunity than to have the honor of hosting the biggest fishing tournament in the world, the Bassmaster Classic. Not just once, but twice. There have been so many other opportunities open up for anglers in the last half century that it's hard to even mention them all. Things like the close to home program, the expansion in additional trout areas, sawguy production and stocking, and the list could go on. And at every step, these increased opportunities have stemmed from enthusiastic anglers telling us they're hungry for more. Black bass fishermen are the big game hunters of the angling set. They know tackle is important in catching bass as is skill in using it. Favorite lures are guarded jealously. Black bass are found throughout Oklahoma waters. They're full of fight and will sometimes weigh over 10 pounds. fishermen keep moving and changing lures, always trying to discover the right combination. It takes a few missed fish to get the reflexes tuned just right. Bass fishing is short, well-placed casts where big bruisers may be resting. It's repetition and patience, trying to conjure up the savage fury in the fish that produces a swirling rush of water and a strike akin to being tied to a runaway locomotive. Big bass are smart, or they'd have been gobbled up while still a fingerling. That's why anglers treasure the big one so. He's a rare trophy any angler can be proud of. There's a trick to catching them, but only the bass know for sure what it is. There's 
something about rivers, murky, slow, deep-running rivers that accentuate the pensive solitude known only by the trotliner. The river banks are his signposts. They tell him what lies below, and the dedicated trotliner knows his fishing river as well as his backyard. several lines precisely. It takes well-tied hooks, set at just the right depth, and the proper bait to catch the big Oklahoma flatheads. Good trot liners don't happen after one session on the river. It takes years of experience and lots of experimenting. The spell of running river lines seems to be doing a job well, enjoying the companionship of fellow fishermen, and just plain getting away from it all. That one last tug to ascertain the line is properly tied. A final gesture saying, I've done my job, now it's up to you. Come morning, you don't have to shake a trot liner out of bed. He's on the river at daybreak, as full of anticipation as a kid on Christmas morning. in the world couldn't buy the moment when he first pulls that line up from the water and feels something heavy pull back. That's his special moment. Years of run in line will never dull this moment. The tingling sensations, the quickness of breath, and the thrill of anticipation. Touch it. <laughs> you caught that all by yourself. I wanna do it again. You wanna do it again? Of course you do. Oh man, that's awesome. Both of you kids caught your first fish here today all by yourself. Can you catch my fish is bigger than hers. It might have been, but this one's awesome, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, got this spiky thing on top. Oh, that is great. You know, if you ever wanted to know if the essence of fishing, the spirit of fishing was still alive and well, well, I mean, the looks on these kids' Let's faces it says it all. Interviewer. The spirit of fishing is in great Let's hands with the, the next interview. generation. The hey, thanks for joining us today. For yeah. all of us at your wildlife department, we'll see you right back here next time on Outdoor Oklahoma. Hey, all right! 
Man finds it difficult to put things like solitude, beauty, tranquility, and peace of mind into words. But what words can't say, a smile does. Faces take on a mystical glow when speaking of fishing. There's enjoyment, satisfaction, fulfillment. The happiness that is fishing comes from within. It's an intangible, wonderful thing. It's the spirit of fishing.